So now we're going to go ahead and install our Edelbrock RPM air gap intake for the small block Ford. And uh, I really like these. These eliminate the heat crossover and uh, you get a much denser air fuel charge to your engine. Not necessarily the most efficient choice, but uh, looking at it from a power aspect, uh, these are definitely a good choice in that regard. So, um, you know, notice I just had it sitting on there. The first thing I want to mention about these aftermarket pieces is these drillings are oftentimes, uh, they have a lot of burrs. So what I've already done is uh, I've gone around with our deburr tool and gone around these edges because what will happen is uh, uh, those burrs will really distort or if they're really bad they can really distort your uh, your mating surface and particularly on these AFR heads they were actually super super bad so uh, you want to go ahead and um, you know check for that and feel around with your fingers and obviously I laid something over my lifter valley here and I went around and deburred all these drillings so now they're good and smooth and we're ready to uh, install our intake manifold to our head so I was just doing a test fitment and uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is, even though these are new pieces, I'm going to go around these with uh, um, some carb cleaner or uh, whatever cleaner you prefer. And we're going to remove any oil contaminants that may be on these surfaces in order to get the best possible seal we can. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So you want to use a fairly clean rag here, free of debris that's not going to fall down inside your engine. Get a good liberal amount on here. Then we're just going to go around and wipe all these surfaces clean. If you're dealing with iron heads and doing this, you want to make sure that you've scraped all your gaskets uh, to a very high degree and have all your surfaces very clean. I can't stress enough how important having clean mating surfaces is. Okay, so the next part I want to mention that's special about aluminum heads and aluminum intake manifolds, but specifically if you're running aluminum heads, is obviously aluminum threads are a lot weaker than uh, in your cast heads, your threading. So what I like to use is uh, these ARP head studs. They work real good and any head studs you can find that are uh, a strong enough grade to withstand torque will do. So, but in this case, um, these head studs will really help us so we're not going to pull out any of our threads when we're torquing down our intake manifold and we're not going to get any distortion. Also, they um, just overall, they really help to line things up when you're setting your intake on. So uh, what I've gone ahead and done here is I've used our uh, engine assembly lube and coated all our threads that screw into the block here. So we don't want to come across any interferences or inconsistencies in torque. We want to have our head studs here fully seated into our heads. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And also, before I installed these heads, way before, I ran a thread chaser through all these threads. Even though they're new heads, you can still get some burrs and some threads or some dirt and it can cause issues. So you want to make sure that your threads are all good and clean. And uh, with iron heads, this is especially important because, you know, oftentimes you have quite a bit of dirt in your threads and just a standard, even if you have your heads boiled and worked over, they're still going to have dirty threads. So you want to make sure that your threads are good and clean. So I'm just going to go ahead and take all our head studs here and get them all good and threaded in and should be ready to move on from there. Make sure again that you want these to be fully seated. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and install our intake manifold gaskets. These in particular are the Felpro Prentiseal gaskets and they do very well. I've used them quite a few times. I've never had any issues with them to date. So uh, they specify in the Velcro directions to just use a little bit of light gasket sealer around the uh, water ports. But, uh, you know, though this is a performance engine, it's going to be driven every day. So we want to be, uh, you know, good and safe. We don't want to have issues. So we're going to put a very, very light coating around our intake ports here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is we do not want to put a ton on and then when we tighten everything down, squish a whole bunch of the sealer 
into our port, and it's really going to distort our airflow. And, uh, you know, not a good situation. So we're going to go very, very light around our intake ports, and then uh, we're just going to use a tab more around our water ports. But anyway, so we're going to get going with that. And uh, my gasket maker of choice here for this particular application is Ultra Black because it's, uh, it's a Permatex brand piece here and it's made for maximum oil resistance. So anyway, like I said, we're going to go around our uh, ports on our gasket here and then we're going to also go along our front and back sealing surface of our intake manifold. Now, they usually come with cork gaskets, but if you go change around heads, you go plane in your uh, block like I've done. This block has obviously been decked. These are AFR heads. So, And uh, when I set my intake manifold down on there, it's very, very thin. There is not much room. And I can tell that if I were to use these gaskets, you know, I'd end up having a leak. So um, it's good practice. and. Um, Many, many people do this. We're going to go ahead and use gasket sealer on the front and back sealing surfaces or intake manifold. I've never had any issues with this. Um, I've used it for many years, no problems at all. All right, so once you have your sealer, notice we have a very, very, very light amount. Um, I obviously rubbed it on there just barely and then went around my finger. So there's a most minimal amount possible around these intake ports. So as I said, these gaskets have a side that say head side. So we're going to go ahead and set this down properly. Now you'll notice that there's these locator tabs on the head gasket. And our intake gaskets are going to lock into these. A um, really nice feature that Fords have there so that uh, we know that it's 100% located and where it's supposed to be. And also, a bit of good visual check here, as you can see, all our porting is lined up perfectly. Okay, so now we got our intake manifold uh, gaskets good and seated here. You want to make sure that you don't, uh, while you're working, you don't put any caps or lids to your gasket sealer in this lifter valley because you will forget them. But uh, Anyway, we're going to go ahead and run our gasket sealer across the front and back of our mating surfaces here. So we're going to first fill our little notch, and you just want a good, consistent bead of sealer. Um, you know, in this case, let or uh, more is ideal because you can always wipe it off. Obviously, you want to be within reason here. So you're not wiping off just globs and globs, but uh, we want to come over here and fill this um, separation. And about that much is what you're going to need. Any more than that, and it's really squirting out the sides a little bit of, like I said, squirting out spines. We can wipe that off, but um, go ahead and. Again, make a good bead across here. Now this is where the head studs really shine. So we're going to grab our intake manifold here uh, by our carburetor uh, porting. Or we can get a good grip on it and then hold on to um, our thermostat housing. And these really help to line up our intake manifold. As you can see here, I only have one place to go with it now and we're not going to slosh around or worry we're going to damage our gaskets. So we're just going to set this right down in here nice and easy. So as you see here, that was a good amount of sealer. Not too much and not too little. As, it, uh, as our intake manifold compresses down, um, that should seal up real, very nicely. So, anyway, um, we're just going to simply uh, take our ARP washers and we'll drop these down across and then 
we'll run all our nuts down and we should be ready to uh, snug everything down and torque everything down. So I'm going to get these all down on here and we'll go to work. So it's always good to be prepared. You can always guarantee that when you're doing an intake manifold install, if you do not test fit every little thing, something is going to go awry. So uh, luckily we could think of a quick solution to this scenario here, but as you see, we had to grind down some of our uh, ARP washers here to dodge some of the drillings on our Edelbrock intake manifold here. So as we see, we notched out this washer so it'll slide right down in there and then anyway so crisis averted and we're just going to keep right on moving all right so now we're going to go ahead and uh, snug down our bolts and we're going to want to go in the pattern and even i myself am not infallible so i'm going to go ahead and uh, i got a book here with the pattern so that we don't mess it up so anyway we just want to go easy, be um, nice and slow about this. We want everything to come down together evenly. So we're just gonna go, and go through and slightly hand tighten until we get to the point where we're ready to torque everything down. Now it's essential that you go little bits at a time here. You don't want your intake manifold uh, getting cockeyed. So it's real important that you just take it little bits at a time. You have a lot of geometries uh, working through this assembly, as you can see here, especially this V-wedge uh, design. So, um, you know, just take your time and be slow, go a little bits at a time, and it should work out just fine and seal up just right. All right, so in most cases, you want to just tighten these down nice and hand tight and snug is what uh, AFR in particular says about uh, your intake manifold bolts. But since we have studs, I'm confident that we can torque them. Now your factory torque with an iron intake and iron heads is 25 foot pounds, but I'm gonna shoot more for 18 to 20 foot pounds and because uh, we got plenty of uh, threads with these ARP head studs and we should be all right. So I've set my torque wrench to 15 foot pounds. And these are a little odd because these are 3 8 uh, nuts on here. And it's nice because they're low profile. Like in this case right here with our Edelbrock, we would have gotten into trouble. But it's kind of a smaller socket. So I've kind of come up with uh, uh, this little rigging here that we're going to go ahead and we got some key stock that goes into our 3.8 socket and you know we're going to up our drive size here to our torque wrench and we're going to run all these down to first about 15 foot pounds and then we're going to go to about uh, I'm going to set my torque wrench to about 19. So after you get all your intake manifold bolts torqued down you want to keep going through until your torque wrench clicks off right away because guaranteed when you get done with your last bolt you'll go back to our first bolt here and uh, it'll still turn. So you want to keep going through until your torque wrench clicks off the very second you give any force to it. So in this case, we want to see something about like this when we're done. Where our torque wrench doesn't have any travel, it just clicks off right away. Once you see that, you should be done. So that pretty much concludes the intake manifold installation portion of our top end performance build on our uh, little roller small block Ford here. Uh, one thing you wanna keep in mind is after you run your engine through a few heating cycles, you're gonna to wanna to go through and recheck your torque because 
it can move around a little bit after a few heating cycles and you want everything to stay uniform so you have a nice long lasting seal. So uh, like I said that pretty much concludes the intake manifold insulation. We're getting pretty close to a completed engine and uh, in future videos here we're going to move through some of the little finer details of finishing this engine up. So anyway, intake manifold done and uh, looks good.